Hey, go fans, I'm Thomas Mock. Welcome to Fiddle Beagles. Now, it is time for an end of the week mailbag. Of course, if you want to be a part of any mailbag videos, the big key is be a subscriber to be featured. Every single question that we pulled here, I double check, was from a subscriber. And so, if you're wondering why your question wasn't answered or pulled, either it wasn't good enough, which, sorry, I mean, I only get like five, ten minutes to answer questions, so the best ones go first, or you aren't a subscriber. So make sure you guys go down below and subscribe. Um, Rekka says, after the signing of James Bradbury, um, we now have the best team in the NFC, no injuries, leaving all of the pressure on Hertz. But are we really going to move on if he doesn't work out? Love Hertz and the channel BTW, uh, thank you. Okay, a couple of things here. I don't think we're the best team in the NFC. I think that there are better football teams. There's actually a question coming up here about the best team, and I give you my top five in the NFC, so just, you know, I won't spoil that question. Hang on for that one. Um, but I do think that they're a very good and a very solid roster right now, and it does kind of depend on how good Jalen Hurts is going to be. But I think that Philadelphia is prepared if Hurts stinks. I, I don't understand the stigma of, oh, well, they're tied to Jalen Hurts now. No, they're not. He's on a rookie deal. He's super cheap. And if he stinks this year, then you just waltz right into 2023 NFL Draft, C.J. Stroud, and Bryce Young. Those are your top two quarterbacks in this year's draft. And there will be more. There are always three, four, five quarterbacks we talk about going in the first three rounds. A lot more go in the first round normally, except for this past season. But there will be other options. So Philadelphia, if, if Hurts stinks and this team only wins eight games and they're all healthy and Hurts just plays bad the entire time, they'll bench him during the year for Gardner Minshew and then draft his replacement next year. I mean, I have no doubt about that. Now, now, personally, I do think that Hurts is going to be just fine. I think Hurts can lead this football team to the playoffs. They can win the division. They can go on a playoff run. I think the, I think the roster is that good, and I believe in Hurts' development and his desire to development, which is very key right now for quarterbacks. But just don't, don't. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry that even if they stink, they'll, they'll keep him for another year. You saw what happened with Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz had, you know, two straight kind of iffy years and really one bad year, but it wasn't like he was horrific, and they, and bye, see ya, they dumped him. So I do think that they have a contingency plan, hence why they have two first-run draft picks next year, but I expect Hurts to be just fine, and hopefully you are winning games, and then use those draft picks to take even more good players to build around young Jalen Hurts. Um, add Ray Penn, comment down below, who is the better quarterback, or who will be the better quarterback this year in college football? Is it C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young? Now, again, I hope we don't have to draft either one of these players because that means Hurts would have stunk this year and it's a lost year. But who do you think is going to be better? Is it Ohio State's quarterback or Alabama's quarterback? Let me know down below right now. Next question comes from Spirit Hunter TV, who says, one of your recent on one of your recent videos, you named a couple of teams ahead of the Eagles in the NFC. For example, Rams, Bucks, Packers, etc. Which team uh, that you ranked above the Eagles has a shot to lose to the Eagles in the playoffs and the Eagles get an upset? Um... You know, this one's interesting. So let me just give you my NFC power rankings as it stands right now. This is just my own opinion, and I can be wrong here. And I think you can move people up and down this list, but here's my top five. The Rams are the best team. They have an incredible roster. They're the Super Bowl champs. They have a great offensive-minded head coach. And Matt Stafford, I mean, that was year one with the Rams, and he won a Super Bowl. I know he's a veteran, but year one with a new team, hard to do. He's going to be in year two with the same team. I think he's going to get even better. They got some new weapons on the outside. Robert Woods uh, traded away, but they brought in Allen Robinson, probably re-signed OBJ. They're the best roster, I think, right now in the NFC. Packers got worse offensively, but they drafted very, very well. That young player, as the tall guy at North Dakota State they got in round two, I think he's going to be a great receiver. Rodgers is going to make everybody around him just fine. Their defense is way better than people give it credit for. I think Green Bay continues to be a double-digit win team, and they win um, the uh, the uh, NFC North. Excuse me. Bucks are third. Now, the Bucs got a little bit worse this offseason. Their interior defensive line, besides Vita Vea, you know, they haven't re-signed Jason Pierre-Paul. They have not uh, re-signed Ndamukong Sue. Like, they're not as strong as they were the Super Bowl year two years ago. But Brady comes back. I'm a believer in Tom Brady. I think he's fantastic. They were a player or two away from beating the Rams uh, at, at, at Tampa in that, uh, what was it, the divisional round overall. And so I think he's still very good. I think we saw Philadelphia still has a long way to go to match the Bucs as we saw in the divisional round. Philly uh, Waltz is in at number four here, and that's strictly due to the fact that the roster is impeccable. It's really, really good, and everybody knows that. I mean, even if you're a biased Cowboys fan, you have to at least admit Philadelphia's roster on paper is better. As we talked about, they'll go through Jalen Hurts. Hurts has got to play really, really well. If he does, this is a top four roster in the National Football League, and a top four or in the NFC, and a top four team in the NFC as well. I'll put the Niners at five right now. What, what is Trey Lance? You like to think he's going to be good. The rest of the roster is solid. What happens with Debo Samuel? It's a fair question mark, but I think they slide in at five as long as Lance doesn't stink. Not mention are the Cowboys, Cardinals, Vikings, and Saints. I think that's kind of the you know battle for the wild card spots right there. But Philadelphia's roster on paper is better than all of those, and has a lot less drama than the 
Cowboys and Cardinals. They don't have Kirk Cousins at quarterback. And the Saints, well, Jameis Winston, I guess? Eh, overall. So, I mean, that's a long-winded answer. But I do think Philadelphia can beat any of these teams. I think your best chance at an upset is the Bucks because I put them higher than Philadelphia. But why can't you go on the road and beat the Packers or the Rams? I mean, if the defense plays as good as, the, as, as it's supposed to, they should be able to compete with these teams. Okay, um, before we go ahead and get to the next question here, I want 30,000 subscribers by next week. We need 254 more subscribers to get to 30K. If you guys like the channel, like the content, go down below and subscribe. I'd love to get the mythical 30K number here, which is hard to do, especially for you know your channels here on YouTube. 30K is a lot. Let's get to it by uh, next week, 254 away. Andrew says, hey, Mott, uh, I've been watching every video for the past month now, and I have to say you do an amazing job. Thank you. Uh, my question is, who do you think will win the safety job, Wallace or Epps? I'm leaning towards Epps. Um, I am too. Like, Epps is leading the race right now. He's not leading the race because he's significantly better. He's the more veteran player, and he's the guy that they really put in in, in fill-in spots last year for Ronnie McLeod and gave him a little bit more starting playing time than Wallace. So they've kind of, you know, tipped their hat in saying they like Epps a little bit more than Kayvon Wallace. But make no doubt about it. Like, it is, it is an open battle and the best player will come out and win in training camp. Just because I say Marcus Epps doesn't mean that Kayvon Wallace will eventually emerge to go ahead and be the starter. Epps is one of those special team guys who's just kind of been lingering around, like I mentioned, filled in from, from, from time to time, but he gets the defense and he gets his job and I think that that's what they're looking for at that safety at that safety spot. Of course, Kayvon Wallace is kind of the wild card here. Will he, will he be better than what he's been the past couple of years? Will he grow into what we expected him to be when taken out of Clemson? He's beefed up. He's put on 10 pounds. Oh, picture of him about a month ago. He is bigger, a little more physical. That was kind of a hit. He's a little bit small. And so, honestly, may the best man win. This is one of the more interesting camp battles that we're going to see as we get towards training camp. I lean towards Epps, but, you know, it could be anybody. Um, pick your safety. Type ME for Marcus Epps or type KW down below for Kayvon Walsh. Let me know who you guys think will win this battle. All right, the uh, polos are still on sale right now. They are still 25% off for your two-pack Eagle polos, which you need to rep, especially if you're a golfer like myself. You're on the links. You want to rep the Philadelphia Eagles. Do it with these polos. Chatsports.com forward slash Eagles polo is the link that you need. Go down below in the description box or just, you know, you know, copy and paste it up in the Google search. You know, either way, you get to the same link. But the link is where you get the discount, and you want to jump on that right now. to uh, two-pack polo for 25% off. Chatsports.com forward slash Eagles polo. Uh, Jared Herring says, would you trade TJ Edwards and possibly Andre Dillard together if it meant securing a stud safety before the start of the season? Um, yeah, I mean, and I think that you, what you're hinting at here is Andre Dillard and a pick for Jesse Bates, right? Because you would think that the Bengals need some tackle help and, you know, you get Dillard over there and you get Bates in return. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I think that Dillard is a luxury to have as a backup tackle. You saw that whenever Mylotta missed a couple of games. You know, Dillard played well against the Dallas Cowboys. He's a great player. Or at least he's a solid starting left tackle. And I'm surprised more teams have not tried to go ahead and add him. But you don't need to trade him. Like, they don't have massive holes unless you are going to go get that safety, which is Jesse Bates. Edwards, I think you keep. I I, I don't know if, T, if N'Kobe Dean is for sure going to win the job week one at middle linebacker. I want him to. I expect him to. But Edwards is the veteran. He's played a lot more in the National Football League, and he could very easily win the job and hold the job for a long time this season as N'Kobe gets up to speed. Because even though he played at Georgia, the uh, the speed difference is way, way, way faster in the NFL. And so I, I, I would keep Edwards until you know for sure that Dean is going to be a really great player. Now, I actually did a video yesterday or two days ago now no, I think it was yesterday. Either way, on the channel, there's with some crazy trade ideas that have been uh, floated around by Bleacher Report. You see the thumbnail on your screen right now. Check that one out. Just go to the channel and look at you know yesterday's video. Uh, Jesse Bates is in that video, so I would encourage you guys to go ahead and check that one out. And have you already watched it though? If you already watched my crazy trade video from yesterday, type Y below for yes. If not, pause this video, go back, watch it, then come back and type yes. But if you haven't, then type no down below. Um, okay, let's do this one here. I'm I'm a LT. I'm a LT. Says running backs are not as important as they used to be. Well, left tackles are more important. If the quarterback is still regarded as the most important position on the offense, you remark that safety position isn't as important as it used to be. What do you think is the most important defensive position is? Um, pass rusher is the most important, for sure. Like, cornerback and pass rusher are your top two, but pass rusher is, I mean, by far and away, the most important position in the NFL. Look at all four teams that made it to the championship games. They had double-digit, very good pass rushers. You don't think the Bengals did? They did. I mean, look, look at the numbers. You've got to have elite pass rushers, which get after the quarterback. They disrupt timing. They disrupt throwing lanes. Like, all the things that you want to do on defense start with pass rush. Safety is important, 
I just look back at, you know, the past couple of years and the star safeties in the league. They're making plays, but they're not making massive differences in terms of wins and losses. Like, Philadelphia can 100% win playoff games with Marcus Epps and Anthony Harris as their playoff or as their starting playoff safeties because they have two good cornerbacks and an elite front seven that has, like, eight good pass rushers. So, I definitely think that the Eagles defensive line is their bread and butter this year. I think 100% they are going to... Um, you know, dominate this year, but I, I'm not saying that safeties are, are terrible and you don't need one. You 100% need a good safety, and I think Epps can be that, but at the same time, it's not the most important defensive position that would be pass rusher. Um, I am Hip Hop Anime Lover says, if defense struggles, does Gannon remain with us next year? 0% chance. I mean, Gannon should be on a tight leash, and Gannon is uh, this weird coach who has this kind of stigma around him where at, you know, NFL circles, they like him. I mean, the guy was getting head coaching interviews. He interviewed for the Texans job. And yet, you look at what happened with the Philadelphia Eagles defense, go back and watch the Bucks film. Like, the defense looked terrible. And there were a lot of times where Gannon's defense just made no sense. And his scheme is very odd. Now, they drafted to fit his scheme. He wants to bring forward, you know, get pressure with four and then drop a bunch into coverage. They're going to be able to do that this year because they have two good cover, cover corners, Avante Maddox in the slot, and a bunch of great pass rushers. So maybe now his you know scheme can flourish. But his scheme last year didn't work very well, and I think if it struggles again this year with the talent that he has, he's got to go bring somebody else in. You know, I'd rather have Jim Schwartz than him at this point if that defensive performances uh, keep up as they were very bad last year. All right, ultimate today on our mailbag video. Hope you guys enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. We'll be back uh, next week with, of course, our normal slate of videos. Hashtag Eagles in the comments. Be a part of next week's video. Be sure to be a subscriber for that. Follow me on Twitter as well to interact while I'm off the air for a Memorial Day at Real Thomas Mott. Again, for the channel, Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.